Hey everyone, welcome to Sunshine Hills Church Online. So glad you're joining with us today. I want to let you know of some great things coming up in the life of our church, and then I'll be introducing our special guest speaker for today. Uh, so just a reminder, once again, next Sunday, August the 21st is Testimony Sunday. I'm so excited for a chance to come together and allow the stories of our church, the stories of our people to weave together the weave together the tapestry of the message. It's going to be a wonderful time together. So uh, if you would like to be involved, if you'd like to share for 30 seconds, for a minute, for three minutes, for five minutes, whatever it looks like, if you'd like to share a part of your story, something that God has done in your life, please reach out to myself, anyone on church staff. We will get you plugged in. Can't wait to hear what God has been doing in your life and have you have an opportunity to share that with our church. As announced uh, last week by Francine, we're launching a brand new program this fall entitled Grief Share. It's a program specifically designed to help people who are coping with loss and grief uh, work through that pain towards uh, healing and restoration. It's going to be launching in September, but right now we are looking uh, for people in our church who are willing to serve, to come alongside Francine and build a team that can really put this on uh, to serve our church and our community. So if you're interested in learning more about Grief Share, looking about ways to get involved in it, please reach out and talk to myself or to Francine. We'd love to talk to you more about the opportunity to serve as part of Grief Share this fall. Uh, another thing to let you know about, Danny uh, Hunt referenced it last week in his wonderful message regarding service. Uh, we are gearing up for the fall, and we have our volunteer availability forms ready for September and October. As we come into the fall, maybe it's a new season for you. If you're looking to get involved in any way in our church, we have a place of service for you. and We'd love to connect your uh, gifts and your talents and your abilities to a place where you can serve uh, the church and our people in a meaningful way. So make sure you talk to Pastor Jenny Hunt, to myself. Uh, check out that availability form online. We'd love to get you plugged in and serving this fall. For today, uh, I want to let you know who our special guest speaker is. Uh, she's an elder in our church. She's a worship leader. She served with our young adults and with our teenagers. Uh, she's a wonderful uh, leader within our church, and I know that she has a wonderful word for this morning, something that God has, been, has laid on her heart and been working in, uh, working in her own life around. Uh, so I want you to join with me in welcoming uh, Leanne Hunt this morning as our guest speaker. Well, hello, church. My name is Leanne Hunt, and it's an honor to be speaking in the More Than Shallow series alongside so many others. And, you know, usually when I have a microphone in my hand, I'm singing with you all on a Sunday morning, and today I have the privilege of speaking, which is just a, a lovely change. So I want to dive right in. When I was first approached to speak in this series, I knew right away that I wanted to speak on the subject of gratitude. And it's something that I have been working on in my life for quite a long time. Back in about 2015, 2016, I began this daily practice in a, a bullet journal, so something like this, where every day I would write down one thing that I was grateful for. And at the time, I didn't really realize how much this would impact my faith. But I soon, like soon after starting, I came to just realize how much um, my perspective on situations would change in life. And so I would approach things with, you know, um, looking for the good. And I would see things with more joy um, rather than situations that I would find otherwise quite stressful or frustrating or heartbreaking you know, the list goes on. And so this has just greatly impacted my life in such a positive way. And I wanted to share that with you. And, you know, it could be even so simple as, you know, the other day, Danny and I were driving down the road and I noticed that the gas had come down from like 230 or whatever it was down to 189. And I'm like, oh, look, it's it's eighty-nine. And Danny says, that's still high. And I'm like, well, I get that. I know that it's still high, but I will take 189 over 230. I'm just grateful that it's coming down. And so I know that's such a simple thing, but that is how this practice has started to really impact and change my life. And, and the simplest thing is like gas prices coming down. So I'm excited to share with you what I've learned and, and where this has taken me. So let's pray. And God, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, just to speak on just the testimony that um, 
this has changed my life, Lord God, and, and your word is so good, and your word teaches us uh, where to go and how to live, Lord God, and I'm so grateful that um, these words have changed my life, Lord God, and so I just pray that this morning or this evening that we would just be encouraged, Lord God, and that we would be challenged to be people that live a life of gratitude in all that we do. In your name, amen. So there are many scriptures that highlight gratitude and kind of an overarching theme verse for today that we'll continue to come back to is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And it says, rejoice always, Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that goes actually, sorry, 16 to 18. Um, And there's many more verses that talk about this, but I wanted to highlight specifically where Paul speaks about gratitude. Because I I noticed something in his writings that kind of really changed my um, perspective and something that I noticed. And so when he speaks about thankfulness or giving thanks or gratitude, he will often accompany that with another Christian discipline or condition of the heart that he wants us to focus on. So that might be prayer, it might be, you know, having peace, being strengthened in our faith. And, you know, he says, do blank. But while you're doing that said thing, I also want you to give thanks. I want you to have a heart of gratitude in all that you do. And so let's take a look at some of these passages. In Philippians 4, 6 to 7, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 5, 18 to 20, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 2, 6 to 7 says, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in your faith as you were taught, overflowing with thankfulness. And Colossians three fifteen to 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. So admonish one another with songs and psalms. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So in there it even says it twice. And then lastly, Colossians 4, 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Now, there are many, many more verses in the Bible that speak about thankfulness or gratitude, and this just kind of scratches the surface, but hopefully you can see that this is um, time and time again alongside so many things that we are to do as believers of Christ. And so one thing remains clear, though, and that is that we are to maintain a heart of gratitude in all that we do, in everything that we do. And this is repeated several times. You know, obviously when God tells us to do something multiple times, it's important. It's like he's saying to us, you know, don't miss this crucial thing that I'm sharing with you because it's going to be key to your walk with me. It's going to be, be helpful in you doing my will. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to help you to persevere. And so when I thought about the discipline of gratitude and then this analogy of a pool that we've been using this summer of of a shallow end and a deep end, there was another area that came to me in this regard, and and that is the pool deck, you know, where we're nowhere near the water, we're not in it, we're, we're on the sidelines. And the pool deck symbolizes where we aren't living a life of gratitude, where we're not grateful. Now, I don't think that any of us are here by any means, but I do think it is important to note the dangers of living a life of ingratitude and even what the Bible says about it as well. 
You see, it's something that is very important to God and to Jesus. And we see that in Luke 17, where Jesus heals the 10 lepers. And so Jesus heals them. He sends them off. And only one of them comes back to thank him and to praise him. And Jesus responds by saying, I healed 10, but only one has come back to give praise, to thank, and to give glory where glory is due. And just like the nine, I think our culture is very quick to always receive, but we're not always very quick to give thanks. Another scripture in 2 Timothy 3 talks about in the last days, people will be lovers of money, they will be lovers of themselves, and they will be ungrateful. And, you know, this is something that is really honing in on this whole topic of gratitude because it's seen where, you know, we we should be grateful, but then there's many scriptures, more than just these two, where it talks about the dangers of being ungrateful. And there's a danger to being on the pool deck. You know, gratitude is a key to unlocking a deeper walk with the Lord. You see, living a life of gratitude helps to point us back to God to the source of where our life is from, who our provider is, and even the blessings that we receive. And when we are intentional not to practice gratitude, we can easily begin to look to ourselves rather than God. You know, we begin to rely on our own strength, our own ambitions, rather than attributing that God is the source of everything that we have in our lives. And when we hit that road of ingratitude, It's a slippery slope downwards really quickly because we can become prideful. We can follow our own desires and ambitions. And we become distant in our relationship with God where we don't trust him, where we don't have faith in him like we used to. And if we really want to be a people who are humble, living a life of gratitude is the key to getting there. You know, we can't afford in this Christian walk to spiritually stay where we are, be content with where we are. And so as a result, we have to be proactive in living a life of gratitude in all that we do, in every situation, in every circumstance. We must get in the water. So what does it look like to live a life of gratitude in the shallow end? And this is simple for many of us. The shallow end of a pool is comfortable, you know, we can, we can touch the bottom, we can like go under if we want, but we don't have to because we're more or less in control of where we're going. And so living a life of gratitude in the shallow end looks like being grateful when the good and pleasant situations or circumstances happen in life. So perhaps you don't intentionally make gratitude a part of your daily life, but you you know, practice it in some form. And this could look like being reminded of thankfulness on Thanksgiving at church. You know, once a year you expect that sermon from the pastor on gratitude. And then by next week you forget it until next year rolls around and then you hear that sermon again, you know, unless the pastor throws a curveball and doesn't preach on that. Or maybe you are someone who is just grateful when you receive things in life. So, you know, someone does something for you or you receive something, you practice your manners and you say thank you, thankful, or thank you, and you're truly grateful for what they've given you. And now, is that wrong? Is that bad? Absolutely not. You know, in fact, continue to be grateful because it makes you a pleasant person to be around. Or maybe perhaps you do practice gratitude every day. You know, maybe you thank God for a new day, for the beautiful weather, whatever kind of weather you prefer, you you know, his new mercies, what he's done for you. Perhaps that is a part of your daily walk with him. And again, is that bad? Absolutely not. That's something that I practice when I do my, my gratitude journal. And in fact, the scripture says, give thanks in all circumstances. So we should be doing that. It's, it includes the good, it includes the pleasant circumstances, and we should be thanking God for that. We should all be, you know, in the shallow end to an extent and thanking God uh, for those things. But we need to also be thankful in other situations. 
in the deep end as well. So what does it look like to go deeper with God in the deep end of the pool? So if the shallow end is being thankful or being grateful when the good or pleasant situations happen in life, then the deep end of the pool is being grateful when difficult circumstances happen. I want to read uh, a story to you from this book. Erica referenced this earlier in her sermon in The Fruits of the Spirit, The Fruitful Wife by Haley DeMarco. Um, And there's a story in here that illustrates um, gratitude in a really powerful way. And so some of you might be familiar with this story, but just a little bit of background. Um, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy were at Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II. And it illustrates this story of, you know, what it means to really live a life of gratitude when there's difficult circumstances. And so in the, in the book, they um, talk about the living conditions that they face. And they were, they describe it as subhuman. I would say they're not even living conditions at all because of how horrible it is. And so the place, they say, is crowded with people. There's, there's sickness around them, disease. It's filthy. There's no blankets. There's no pillows. There's no place to rest your head. There's no warmth by any means. And there's also just fleas everywhere. And then the sisters exchange this beautiful um, conversation of them discovering what it's going to take for them to make it through this nightmare that they're, they're facing. And so they cry out to God to show them, you know, give us an answer of how we're going to survive this place. And so Betsy has Corey read from 1 Thessalonians 5, so part of what we read um, this morning. And Betsy explains that this is the answer for how they're going to make it through. And that is giving thanks in all circumstances. And so this is the exchange that they have. And they say, that's what we can do. We can start right now to thank God for every single thing about this new barracks. Corey stared at her, then around at the dark, foul, aired room. Such as, she said, such as being assigned here together, such as what you're holding in your hands. She looked down at the Bible. Yes, thank you, dear Lord, that there was no inspection when we entered here. Thank you for all the women here in this room who will meet you in these pages. Yes, said Betsy. Thank you for the very crowding here. Since we're, so pa- since we're packed so close, that many more will hear. She looked at me expectantly. Corey, she prodded. Oh, all right, thank you for the jammed, crammed, stuffed, packed, suffocating crowds. Thank you, Betsy went on serenely, for the fleas and for the fleas. This was too much. Betsy, there's no way even God can make me grateful for the fleas. Give thanks in all circumstances, she quoted. It doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are part of this place where God has us. And so they stood between tiers of bunks and gave thanks for the fleas. This is just a powerful story, and I can't imagine what they went through, you know, there's a lot that I'm grateful for, and I don't know if I am there yet, if I was in that um, situation. But what I do know is that their story can be an encouragement and even a guide for how we can live our lives. That even when we don't, even when we face situations that we, we don't want to or that we want to escape from, we must still incorporate gratitude in all that we do in every situation because it's going to help us to persevere. It's going to help us to change our perspective on the situations that we're facing so that we can make it through. You know, we may not be grateful for particular situations um, or an event that happens, but we can look around and say, even in the midst of this awful situation, this is what I'm grateful for. You know, I'm grateful for the fleas. About 10 years ago, um, I had faced a really rare skin 
condition. And this is like something straight out of Leviticus, which also took my devotional life on a whole new level because I'm like, I understand now. I have a skin condition. <laughs> um, but in all reality, it was, it was physically debilitating. It was painful. Um, it made it hard to do, you know, physical activity. And then it started to wear mentally on my mind because I couldn't sleep and I just couldn't think straight because I was always in pain. And I had seen several medical professionals month after month and they couldn't give me a diagnosis of what it was. It was, it was a mystery to them. And as a result, there was no adequate treatment for it. So I was just continuing to be in pain. And so my prayers were often, God, take this away from me, heal me. I wanted to escape. I was like, please let me get back to normal, quote unquote. And those prayers were not answered. They, I was still sick. I still had the skin condition. But over time, my prayers started to change. And they went from, you know, God, take this away to God, show me what you want to teach me. You know, I'm not sure why I am in this situation or this season. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable. But God, reveal to me what your plans are in this season. You know, if I'm going through this, don't waste it. Don't waste this thing that has happened to me. Do not let my heart become full of complaint and escape, but teach me what you want to show me what you want to show me and what you want me to learn. You know, we don't like to be in uncomfortable situations. You know, I sure did not like having a rare skin condition, but imagine the lessons of perseverance or building of our faith that were lost in seasons of hardship because we focus too much on the negative rather than approaching it with a heart of gratitude to help us through that valley. I'll say that again. Imagine the lessons of perseverance or of building our faith that were lost in seasons of hardship because we focus too much on the negative rather than approaching it with a heart of gratitude to help us through that valley. You know, Corey Tim Boom um, goes on to say that later, like living in Ravensbrück uh, with her sister was one of the most joyous times of her life. I don't know if I could say that, but am I grateful I had a painful skin condition? No, but am I grateful for the many lessons that I was taught by God along the way and that has helped shape me into who I am today? Absolutely. You know, even when life has you in valley moments, the places or situations that you want to escape from, you don't know if you can hold on anymore and you want God to just remove you. Have you taken a moment to thank God for where you're at? Remember that thanking God for whatever you can in those moments helps to shift our perspective like it did for Corey, like it did for me. You know, it allows us to put our trust in him and to know who our provider is and where our source of life is from. And it even helps us to shift our feelings because our feelings may not always be accurate in what we are facing. And having a heart of gratitude in the deep end allows us to be people who face situations without complaint or grumbling. So I say to you, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, in the shallow end and in the deep end. So what if you are someone who does give thanks in the deep end? You know, you can give, you know, thanks in difficult situations. That's awesome. And continue to do that. But there's one other area of the deep end that I want to explore, and it's kind of like an underwater water tunnel. Um, and that is living a life of worship to God through thanksgiving. So in Hebrews 12, 28, 29, just some of it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. You know, a lot of what I have discussed today is reactionary when it comes to gratitude. And what I mean by that is, you know, a situation happens, whether good or difficult. And then as a result, we give thanks. So like, you know, I got a job promotion. I, you know, received a bonus at work. Therefore, I'm grateful. But what if we really took to heart the words of Paul in Colossians 2, where it says we were overflowing with thankfulness? 
You know, what if we were grateful before those situations, good or difficult, arose? You know, because when we are thankful to him, to God, we are in fact worshiping him. I want us to encourage us, and whether you're in the shallow end, the pool deck, the deep end, whatever it might be, I want us to be people who can incorporate gratefulness as a lifestyle, as an act of worship to God. You know, when on a Sunday morning we have, you know, moments where there's no scripted lyrics in our worship through music and we're just, you know, singing our own song, that is the time where we can just be thanking God, whether we sing it or we say it. We can just thank God for who he is, you know. What if we praised God not just because of what he has done in our lives, but because of who he is in our lives? How drastically would that start to change your life? So again, I say give thanks in all circumstances. All, meaning all before the good, the bad, preemptively giving thanks. So where are you in the gratitude pool? So I sure hope you can pinpoint where you are, if it's the pool deck, the shallow end, you know, the deep end. My prayer is that intentionally practicing gratitude can become a part of your daily life in some form, if it's not already. And so I want to give some application for those three areas. So if you're on the pool deck, okay, you're, you're not practicing gratitude as part of a daily habit that you have, you can start today by simply creating, like me, maybe a, a, a journal where you write down one thing a day that you're grateful for. Or if maybe writing's not your thing, maybe you start your day with a prayer or a reflection of who God is. Or at the end of the day, you reflect on, you know, what's one thing that I was grateful for that happened to today? And I really hope that that can just start to change your perspective. Maybe you need to just start that in the shallow end with just thanking God for, you know, the good things that happened. If you're not quite there yet to give thanks in the difficult situations. Um, But I really believe that creating this habit now will be able to help change your perspective. And when you face seasons of difficulty, you will be able to see a way through and a way out. And being grateful, you know, may be the crutch you need in order to walk through the next wilderness that you face. So if you're in the shallow end, um, I challenge you and encourage you to start to thank God for the difficult situations and circumstances that you face. You know, or perhaps you've already had a lot of valley moments in your life and you came out of that, you weren't grateful for it. It's never too late to look back and reflect and say, God, I'm, I'm grateful that I made it through. And maybe there was something that, you know, God wanted to teach you. It's not too late to ask him, God, what did you want me to learn in that valley moment, you know, that prayer that I had during my skin condition over 10 years ago, let that be an encouragement and something that you can use too. God, show me what you want to do in this season. Don't waste what is happening, but teach me. Allow me to persevere through this. And then if you're in the deep end, continue to be grateful in all circumstances. And I think a challenge for all of us is to really live a life of worship where we are overflowing with thankfulness in all that we do in every situation. Um, Would we just be people that are grateful for everything that God has done for us, who he is to us, and what he's going to do in our lives? So let's pray. God, I just thank you um, for the lesson of gratitude that you've uh, revealed in your word, Lord God. And I just pray that we would be a people that can really unpack and, and dive deeper into what it means to live a life of gratitude to you. So God, for those on the pool deck, God, I just pray that you would just quicken to them um, to be grateful, Lord God. Would you remind them throughout their day and their coming and their going of when to be grateful, Lord God? Would they make it just a discipline, Lord? Would they um, be able to see in the good and in the difficult situations of life when to be grateful? And God, for those in the shallow end, Lord God, I thank you that you have walked with them in the blessings of life, Lord God, the things that you've given them, Lord. And so I just pray for courage, Lord God, that they would be able to see 
situations that are difficult, that are that are stressful, that are frustrating, that are scary, Lord God, I pray that you would be able to just open their eyes and their hearts, Lord God, to be able to see what you're doing in that season, in that situation for them, Lord God. And would you just reveal things of the past, Lord God, where maybe they weren't grateful in that moment, but they're looking back now and they want to know, God, what were you teaching me? Why did you let that happen? Why? So God, I just pray that you would just reveal to them what that was for, Lord God. And maybe we won't know the why, Lord, but you would at least just give them some answer, Lord God, in in moving on and healing from that, Lord God. And Lord, to those in the deep end, God, I thank you that you have walked with them so faithfully, God. And I pray that we would just be people that are overflowing with thankfulness, Lord God, in the good situations, in the difficult situations, God, and that we would just be people that can go deeper with you, Lord, in our in our daily walk, Lord, whether that's our prayer life, Lord, whether that's in our worship through music, just our, our day, our coming and our going, Lord, I pray that we would just exude gratefulness and thankfulness in all that we do. And if you are someone who, you know, you don't know Jesus, you've never invited him to be, you know, in your life, I just, you can pray this with me now. God, I I thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sins, Lord God. And I recognize that, you know, I am a sinner. There is, there is wrong that I have done that separates me from you, Lord. And so I just ask for forgiveness, God, for the things that I have done and things that I will do, Lord. And I just invite you to come into my heart, Lord, that you would just be my Lord and you would be my King from this day forward, Lord. And would your spirit just um, move powerfully in my life from this day on. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. It's been just an honor to speak to you on the topic of gratitude. And I just encourage you, just be grateful this week as you head into your your school or your work or wherever it might be. Let us be people that are overflowing with thankfulness.